Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 27, and I'm reading the first four verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. Good morning, everybody. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to welcome you to our worship service today. I hope and I trust that you have been blessed and that you have been holding very tightly onto God during this time. Just one announcement. Please take note that our Holy Week will be starting on the evening of the 10th of April. In other words, Palm Sunday, that evening, we start with every day right through until the 17th, we will have a service. A couple of highlights. On the 12th, we have a play, which is being arranged by Yvonne Peterson. The 13th, the Wednesday, Neil will be doing the Passover meal for us. And then, of course, the 14th, we will have Tenebrae service. And then, of course, the usual Good Friday service. And then the Resurrection Sunday service. So I hope you've made a note of these. And I would love to see you at all of these services in church. So let us come and let's praise the Lord. Let's become silent before Him. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Genesis. I'm reading from chapter 15. I'm reading the first 12 verses, and then I'm going to verse 17 and 18. Our reading is a little bit long, so I beg your indulgence, please. Verse 1. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliza of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited him as righteous. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I shall gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought all of these, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking brazier with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, 
To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Come, let us pray. As we turn our thoughts to the Lord, let us just think of those wonderful words in Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Creator God, we glimpse your beauty in setting sun, on the mountain tops, in eagles' wings. We sense your power in thunder crash. Lightning flashes and oceans roar. O oh Lord, we praise you. O oh precious Jesus, we see your love stretched out upon a cruel cross. We stand in awe at your sacrifice. Pure love poured out for us, the whole humankind. Precious Jesus, we praise you. O oh, Holy Spirit, we see your power in lives transformed, hearts on fire. We listen to your still, small voice, comforting, guiding, calling. We praise you, Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, from the moment we awake to the face the day ahead, you are with us through good times and bad times. Your presence enough for our needs every day. I will praise you and glorify your name forever. Through the hours of the day in our travels and work, you are with us. In decisions we make, your wisdom enough for our needs. O oh Lord, as we go to bed at night to rest, you are with us. As we lay our fears at your feet, your peace enough for our needs. But Lord, as we come today, your love for humankind, present in the beginning of all things, extends throughout history and touches even my life. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love feels pain and wipes away our tears. Your love knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. Your love sees sin and still loves the sinner. Forgive us when we fail to live lives that reflect your love. Forgive us the many times when we take for granted all that you have done for us. Transform us through your Spirit and empower us to serve you. O oh Lord, as we come now, embrace us, hold us, and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Thus Philippians, and it's chapter 3, verses 17 to 21, but then going through to chapter 4, verse 1. Verse 17, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For, as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. Who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control. Will transform our lowly bodies. So that they will be like his glorious body. Therefore my brothers and sisters. You whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, 
Stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I only read thus far. May the Lord bless his holy word to us. Amen. Come, let us pray together. Oh, dear Lord God, as we've come today, Lord, to hear your message. Oh, Lord, as we seek that encounter with you, Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, we pray that you will speak to us, speak to our hearts, Speak to our minds. Give us the wisdom to understand your scriptures today, to understand your message today, so that truly, Lord, we may hear you and that you will speak to us. But speak to us in a language that we can understand. O oh Lord, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray, dear Lord God, that you will use me as an instrument of communication. And Lord, that through me you will bring your message to your people. So, Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that each and every word that goes from my mouth will be your words and your meditations, and that they will bring you honor and glory at all times. So, Lord, we pray, be with us now, hold us, speak to us, and teach us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So folks, today I want to talk to you about something that is very, very prevalent. It's very prevalent in our lives. It's very prevalent in our homes. It's very prevalent in our social circles. It's very prevalent in our communities. And it's prevalent all over the world. And that that I want to talk to you about today is negativity. I have previously spoken to you about this but today I just want us to take a different approach to it just like Paul does in this passage of scripture that he has given to us today you may say to me John I'm not negative I'm okay I'm I'm actually a very optimistic positive person others may say to me John you know what I'm, I'm, I'm I, I start veering off nearer to being a pessimist um, but I think more I'm a realist. So, let me ask you. In your discussion yesterday with somebody, your friend, your spouse, your son, daughter, whoever, what was your discussion about? Was it about all the violence that's happening in the world today? Because I know what's on the lips of the people right now is the war in the Ukraine. And how everybody is focusing on Vladimir Putin and a lot of people are saying that he is the second Hitler. And we, we're focusing on the death of all the people. Focusing on everything. Or are we focusing on the corruption in our country, for example? I went driving to Northgate yesterday, and as you go down the road, you see all the potholes. And that immediately brings a discussion out of the money that has disappeared. I think of Fakili and Balula, our Minister of Transport, who visited Volmeranstadt, the, ma the main road, yesterday. And his immediate response was, this is what corruption brings. Or are you focusing on illness? Somebody in your family that is ill? Somebody close to you that is ill? Or perhaps yourself, you are ill? And... I think in human nature, human terms, because of all such negativity that comes down on us, it is natural to become negative. But you know what? The Bible warns us against negativity. It warns us. 
You know, 365 places in the Bible, the Bible says to us, fear not. You say to me, John, but fear not. Fear not and negativity is not the same thing. Well, let me just ask you this. What brings about the negativity? If we are ill, we're afraid. The violence, we're afraid. The corruption, we're afraid there's not going to be anything left in our economy and we won't be able to buy food. We are afraid. The best description of this is found in, in, the, in the Old Testament where it is referred to, the Hebrew says, Ahat. A-H-H-A-D. And when translated, synonyms to this could mean fear, being scared, or it can also mean being shaken. In other words, remember a couple of weeks ago I spoke about our comfort zones being shaken? And you know what? Through all of these things, we are afraid, and that afraid leads to negativity. But Paul also says to us, he says, we should not dwell on the dread in life. The dread is, in other words, the sin or the illness or the bad that is happening. And you know what? <laughs> when I come into conversation last night, for example, I was in a company of people. And everything that came out of there was negative. Now, you may say to me, John, but you just said it's, it's, it's normal. It's a normal response. Well, I want to say to you that negativity can have a very, very bad impact on your life. Negativity can eventually lead to the breaking down of the serotonin within your body, in your brain. Because it's constant negative, 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 bad, bad, bad. The serotonin starts depleting. And when serotonin depletes to below a certain point, then we start suffering from depression. And nobody wants to be depressed. So you see what, what Paul is trying to say to us in this passage to the church in Philippians. Is that we must look at him. We must imitate him. And we have enough in scriptures. You know two thirds of the New Testament was written by Paul. And he gives us classic examples of how to live. He calls us to be radical in our thinking and to change our way of thinking. So he says we must focus on him and we must focus on other people who strive to be within the will of God. Now I want to ask you this. Isn't it nice to be in the company of somebody that's positive? Think of it. I'll never forget, I used to work with a, with a colleague minister, and I believe I've shared the story with you before. And please forgive me for sharing it again. But I was in the company of a colleague minister. And when we sat down in the morning, mornings, it was negative upon negative upon negative upon negative. And I couldn't wait to get out of there. Just to get to somebody that is positive in life. So when we are constantly being negative, people don't want to talk to us. Because they don't want to get dragged down by our negativity. Because you know what? That also has a danger in making you negative. It happened to me. It happened to me to a point where I reached a point and I thought, but 
I've got nothing to be negative about. Yes, everything around me is negative. But in my own personal life, no matter what happens to me, and I started moving away, and every time this colleague minister would say to me something negative, and I'll say, no, 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 stop the negativity. Rather focus on all the wonderful blessings that you have. And the one day he turned to me and he said, what blessings? I said, well, you're relatively healthy. You have a roof over your head. You have food on the table. You have beautiful children that love you very much. What more do you want? So why must we be negative? And I want to, I want to take a step here and I want to say something and that it might make me a little bit unpopular. But a great, great problem towards negativity is gossip. You know, when people get together and they say, hey, have you seen old Chris? Have you seen what he's done now? He's done this and this and this and this. And it's one negative thing after the other and it starts snowballing. And when that's done, then they take the next victim. And so gossip leads to negativity, more negativity. And that negativity leads to the breakdown in relations. And remember what I said to you, we've been called to love one another. Not to gossip and see the worst in people. No. God has called us to look beyond that. So folks, negativity is not a good thing. It really is a bad thing. He actually says, Paul says in this passage, he says, when I see the negativity or the people dwelling on the dread, it actually brings tears to my eyes because their future is destruction. In other words, every place they go is destructive. Now just think about that quickly. When you're in the company of other people and you're negative and you are spreading negativity, isn't that destructive? Instead of building up and being constructive? But John, you may say to me, but John, how do we how do we how we can we be positive with a war that is going on? I want to say to you that this is where you need to turn around and you need to walk in the path of God and focus on Him. Because Paul says, if you don't, then you become enemies of the cross of Christ. Wow. Wow. Folks, did you hear that? With this constant negativity, with this constant breaking down, with this constant not being in God's path, you become an enemy, an enemy to the cross of Christ. Those are very harsh words that Paul uses here. You see, God doesn't want you to be negative. He doesn't want you to be despondent. He doesn't want you, and the Bible is very clear, not to dwell on the dread. In other words, to dwell on negative things. But it says, rather walk in the path of God and focus. In other words, radical change in our way of thinking. Focus on the things of God. And then he says, and then your humiliated bodies will be renewed to be a glorious body. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, firstly, when we change our attitudes, and we are humble enough 
to change our attitudes and take that radical step and we're in God, doing the things of God, our whole attitude in life changes. It changes to one where there is hope, hope in Jesus Christ. It changes to one where we are positive in life. And although these bad things around us are happening, we are able to look beyond them and look towards God and say, God, help. Not dwelling on the bad, but rather dwelling on God. Now, I don't know if you can remember this statement I made, and it's, I, I was walking through Ferndale on Republic the other day, and I see somebody had written it there as well, and it, it is such a beautiful saying. And the saying goes, it says, don't tell God how great your problems are. I'm going to repeat that. Don't tell God how big or how great your problems are. But rather, tell your problems how great and how big our God is. Now, have you ever stopped to think of the implication of that? You see, our focus changes drastically. We're not focusing on how big and how terrible life is, the corruption, the violence, the disease. We're not focusing on how big that is, but rather we are focusing on the greatness of God, the almightiness of God, the omnipotence, the omniscience, and the omnipresent of God. And we know that when we focus on that, that this wonderful God is able to intervene in those problems. Can you imagine if you tell your problems how great our God is and God intervenes? It's like these problems are going to run for their lives. They're going to run to get away from you. Isn't that a wonderful picture to see so instead of focusing on the problem focus on God do God's will seek God's will in every situation when you have a disease don't focus on the disease focus on what God's will is in your life with that disease we don't know what it is it could be a lot of things. God may want to heal you. God may want you to heal. God may want to use your disease to heal other people spiritually. John, what do you mean? You're saying things now that don't make sense to me. I just think of a, of a preacher in the U.S. that was much loved in his community who fell ill. And when he fell ill the people in his church started praying for him. But he didn't get better. So what happened is, eventually, not just the church prayed for him, but the community prayed for him. And so it continued that this whole city prayed for him. Sadly, this preacher died. You may say to me, John, but where's the healing in that? And I want to say to you, the healing may not have been for that pastor. And I'll get back to that now. But the healing was that the whole city was on its knees acknowledging the omnipotence of Almighty God acknowledging their dependence on God. And that is what God wants. He wants us to acknowledge Him and He wants us to love Him and to trust Him. And yes, the pastor that died also found healing. 
Because when he died, he went to be with Almighty God. And it was in heaven, as the scripture says, he was given a new heavenly body without any illness, without any disease, without any tears, without any flaws. So you see, folks, we don't always understand how Almighty God works. But what we need to do is trust Him. So I want to challenge you in this week that lies ahead, that you will go forth and that you will stay away from your negativity, stay away from focusing on the corruption, on the violence, on the diseases, on the way people are ill-treating you, and rather focus on God. God is great. God is awesome. God is wonderful. God is my Savior. That is what I want you to focus on. Not the negative. But focus on the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And you know what? You'll also find that when we do that and we become positive, how people want to mix with us and we can have fellowship, which is one of the four main pillars of the ecclesia. The ecclesia? The church. Without fellowship, there never can be a church. So that is one of the main four pillars I want you to focus on. So focus on God. Turn away from your negativity. Remember about two years ago, I said to you, when people ask you, and they say, how are you doing? Don't just say, I'm well. Rather say to them, you know what? It is well with my soul with God, and therefore I am disgustingly well. Because in God, we have everything. Amen. Come, let us pray. Oh, dear Lord God, Oh, dear Lord Jesus, we have heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, we have heard how Paul has said that we should imitate him and we should observe others who follow you, Lord. Because, Lord, we so easily fall into the trap of negativity. But we know, Lord, that that trap of neg negativity is not from you. But that is the devil trying to distract us away from you. Oh, Lord, we need your help, Lord, and we need you to change our minds for us so that we will take that radical and drastic step, Lord, to come into your ways, Lord, that we may learn not to fear, that we can really dwell on the things that make us positive. But, Lord, we are continually dwelling on that that makes us negative. Lord, help us with this, please. Help us see life, how good it is. Help, help us see, Lord, that you are here, and no matter what happens, and like the psalmist said, Lord, even if my enemies advance, or the word used, beseech me, then my heart will not fear. And though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Because that is what you said to the psalmist, Lord. Lord, help us to be like that. Help us to fully rely on you so that we may know and that we may see you and that we may trust you. Oh Lord, help us in our day-to-day day -day things. Help us, Lord, that when we put the news on and we see the negative, that we will rather pray for those people and rather come with a message of hope to everybody that people may see you and know you. So, dear Lord God, we pray. Help us, Lord. Help us to be positive. Help us to live in the hope that you've given to us. Help us, Lord, to live the joy that you have given to us. Lord, I thank you that you give us this wonderful privilege that we can ask you, Lord, and that you will give to us. We thank you, Lord, that you take us care of us 
and that you love us so much that when we are depressed, you, your heart burns to change us, Lord. But you will not do that because you're a gentleman and you will rather wait for us to ask you for help. So, Lord, we pray, help us to be positive in life and see the light side of life. Oh, Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Folks, that brings us to the end of our service today. May I just once again thank you for allowing me into your homes and allowing me to share God's word with you. So receive now the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Folks, have a wonderful week. I pray that God will just continue guiding you and being with you and i pray that he will just bless you with his richest blessing so until we meet again stay safe stay healthy and always remember that jesus is only a prayer way goodbye now <music>